Hello and welcome to this video from the C5 series, Quantitative Analysis. My name is Mr. Clee. This video is about equilibria, using the contact process as a context to explore the principles of equilibria. Okay, what we're looking for after this video is to describe what equilibrium is and why it occurs. We are also going to try and explain how changing concentration pressure and temperature affects the position of equilibrium and where it is uh, in terms of the left or the right hand side of the reaction. We're also going to look at the different stages in the contact process and the conditions used in the contact process. The key place to start here is with a reversible reaction. A reversible reaction is one that can take place in two directions. So in this reaction, A and B can become C and D, but also C and D can become A and B. And if you start with a situation where you have a lot of A and a lot of B, then the forward reaction, the reaction that goes from left to right will occur and the products C and D will occur. But if you have C and D to start with, then what will happen is the reverse reaction will occur and C and D will react to form A and B. In reality, because you've got two reactions taking place, they both occur at the same time. So at the same time that A and B is reacting to form C and D, C and D will be reacting to form A and B. Eventually there will become a point where the rate that A and B are reacting to form C and D will equal the rate that C and D react to form A and B. This is the point where equilibrium is reached. It's not the reaction stops, it's that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction. I like this little picture here, it kind of shows this idea of equilibrium um, as somebody running up a down escalator. Okay, the, he is still moving, the reaction is still taking place, but because another reaction is taking place in the opposite direction, the position that this person is, or the position of equilibrium, is exactly the same. Now it's important to note that this only works in a closed system, um, which is one where nothing's getting in or nothing's been taken out. If you had a situation where you were removing the product, say you were removing C and D, then you'd favour the reaction from A, um, from A and B to C and D. So pressure, the first of the situations we need to look at. The thing that you need to recall for pressure is molar volume. If you remember, one mole of a gas has a volume of 24 litres or 23, 24 dm3. So in this situation here, this is one of the stages of the contact process. You've got two moles of sulfur dioxide, one mole of oxygen reacting together to form two moles of sulfur trioxide. Now on the left hand side of this reaction, you have a total volume of 48 plus 24 litres. So you've got 72 litres of sulfur dioxide and oxygen that are going to react together to form your sulfur trioxide. The same amount of sulfur trioxide will only take up 48 litres. So if you increase the pressure, you favour the reaction with the lowest volume, which in this case is the formation of sulfur trioxide. So the lower number of moles of a gas molecule, that's the reaction that you favour. Whether it's on the left or the right, it doesn't matter. It just means that you favour the one, by increasing the pressure, you favour the one with the lowest volume. Concentration is fairly straightforward. Um, it's almost like a, uh, like a slide. Whichever one you've got the highest of, the reaction will go the other way. So if you raise the concentration of A and B, what you'll end up doing is creating this slide, this concentration gradient, leading to the production of C and D. If the opposite is true, and you increase the concentration of C and D, then you create a, a slide in the opposite direction, if you like, which leads to the production of A and B. So raising the concentration moves the position of equilibrium to the opposite side of the reaction. And finally, temperature. Temperature, you need to know a little bit more information. You need to know which of the reaction is endothermic and which of the reactions is exothermic. If you remember, exothermic means it gives out heat and endothermic means it takes in heat. Raising the temperature favours the reaction that takes in heat. 
but you're providing the energy that it needs for the reaction to take place. So the endothermic reaction is favoured by raising temperature. So this is different to rate though, because if you remember, rate will be increased by increasing the temperature because of collision theory. This will just favour and give you a different yield depending on which one is exo or endothermic. So we're going to look at the contact process as a context for um, for a reversible reaction and for equilibrium. Contact process makes sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is a really, really important chemical used in all sorts of different chemical processes. One of the main ones, the main one, 60% of all sulfuric acid is used to make fertilizers, but it's also used in car batteries, it's used in processing of ores, it's used in making polymers, paper, uh, pigments and paints and that sort of thing. There are three stages to the process, one of which is an equilibrium process. The first one is sulfur reacting with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. A forward reaction, and you can see this happening here, sulfur burns with this distinctive blue, fa blue flame to form sulfur dioxide. The second stage is the one that we are most concerned with. This is the one that is reversible. This is the one that we can alter the position of equilibrium. Sulfur dioxide, the gas that you've just produced, reacts with more oxygen to form sulfur trioxide in a reversible reaction. 2SO2 plus O2 gives you SO3. That should be 2SO3. Sorry about that. So these are the conditions that you use. We're going to explain these in a second. Do it at about 450 degrees at a high temperature. It's done at atmospheric pressure um, and it's using a catalyst. The catalyst in this reaction is vanadium oxide, which is V2O5. So firstly, looking at temperature, we need to know which is exothermic and endothermic. It turns out the production of sulfur trioxide is an exothermic process. Um, that means that what we can actually do, by doing it at a low temperature, you get a greater yield. However, you get a really, really low reaction. So you have to find a balance, and we describe this balance as being the optimum temperature. That's where the balance between getting a high enough and a significant yield at a quick enough rate is occurring. In this reaction, it's chosen at about 450 degrees. The next one we need to look at is pressure. This is also an example where the rules are not really followed. Increasing the pressure would increase the yield of sulfur trioxide uh, because there is a lower volume of sulfur trioxide than there is sulfur dioxide and oxygen. However, the position of the equilibrium in this reaction is far to the right hand side anyway and increasing pressure is an extremely expensive process. So because of this, they do it at atmospheric pressure, they get a high enough yield, and they don't increase the cost of making it. And finally, a catalyst. Please be aware, catalysts do not change the position of equilibrium. They only increase the rate. So if it asks you, what does a catalyst do to the position of equilibrium in this reaction? It does not affect it, it only increases the rate. So the V2O5 catalyst is used to increase the rate that sulfur trioxide is produced. And the final stage in the contact process, another forward reaction. Your sulfur trioxide that you made in stage two is reacted with water to form the sulfuric acid that we are desiring in this process. So in summary, equilibrium is the point where the rate of a forward reaction and a backward reaction are equal to each other. They are both occurring still, but they are happening at the same rate. When we increase pressure, we move the position of equilibrium to the side with the fewest moles of gas. When we increase concentration, we move the position of equilibrium to the opposite side, that should say. And increasing the temperature moves the position towards the endothermic reaction. So you need to know which one is the endo and which one is the exothermic reaction in an equilibrium uh, reaction. And in the contact process, sulfur dioxide is first burned in air to make SO2. It's then reacted with oxygen to make SO3, which is then dissolved in water to make H2SO4. We do it at a high temperature. The reason for that is to get a high, uh, a high rate High temperature actually decreases the yield. It's done at atmospheric pressure because the position is far to the right hand side anyway um, and increasing the pressure is expensive and we do it with a vanadium oxide cut, uh, catalyst. The catalyst doesn't affect the position of equilibrium, 
just, in, uh, just affects the rate. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Mr. Clay. I'm sorry that this video is a bit longer than most, but it's quite a difficult concept.